What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Avery here today bringing you guys a brand new video talking about what happened at YCS Seattle, talking about just what happened overall, uh, how many Zodiacs topped, how Zodiacs destroyed the format, and how Zodiacs is tier zero, and how Zodiacs is Zodiacs as I drink my water. I <sighs> gotta love Zoo. <laughs> so. Zoo ended up taking 30 of the top 32 spots in the top 32. Um, the reason why it was so many was because it's obvious. Uh, the Zoo uh, engine of Triple Rat Pierre, Double Thoroughblade, and, you know, depending on how many Vipers you want to play or Whiptail, whatever. Th we'll say three Whiptail. Uh, it just makes so many decks so consistent. And the fact that it's just that good, that it has a one card, you know, quadruple exceed. Um, is absolutely busted, and of course the winner was, thank God he won, um, I was watching uh, a little bit of the stream, out of 851 of the duelists, uh, the champion is Alexander uh, Jimen Jimenez, I think is his name, uh, Alexis Rodriguez, yeah, um, he ended up winning with Kaiju Zodiac, I was really glad that he beat Noah Green, Noah Green I think already topped or won nationals, um, and he's with the card guys, and I, I've, you know, Respect for the card guys of Spoofy and all them, and Blair and Noah and all of them. Uh, but I just didn't want to see him get another win under his belt. That might sound mean, but it's like, for one thing, he was playing Artifact Zodiac. If he was playing Kaiju Zodiac like me, then I could respect that. But Alexis Rodriguez was playing uh, Kaiju Zodiac, so I wanted to be able to say that I'm playing the best version of Zodiac so that I didn't feel like I was going to have to invest in another build. <laughs> Maybe that's just me being me. I don't know. Um, it was quite a small YCS as well, 851 of the duelists, but, you know, again, that could be because of the area. I know that's what Capital G was talking about, because the area is just so out there, so to speak, that not a lot of people can really get to it. I know that we had one guy from here in Jacksonville, Florida, who went to Seattle. Uh, I don't know how well he did, though. I barely even knew the guy, but I just know that he was picking up zoo stuff at uh, Sneak Peek, just so that he could be able to play test it and go. But... There was some cheating caught on stream that no one else caught, uh, the judges, and, you know, obviously it's not the commentator's job to catch that, but it did happen, um, it obviously didn't happen in the finals, um, <clears throat> it was a shame to see that happen, I guess, because, you know, games could have gone either way, and just one little, you know, misplay can decide the whole game, or one little cheat can decide the factor of a duel, um, but... Regardless, it was still an overall pretty good event. I mean, I think that this, you know, went as expected, really. I mean, like just like how Capital G put it, it went as expected. Um, Zodiac pretty much took the entire top 32. It's that good of a deck, you know. DDD, ABC, and everything else is just gone. If you want, though, to have a good meta call for this format, then you pretty much just play Stun, uh, Rogue, or anything else. Chain Burn is a uh, great meta call right now. Um, I know people are going to hate me for saying that, but it really is true. You know, there's no decks out there really right now that are playing massive uh, back row removal um, or even massive back row stun like Danko. Um, I saw one deck profile from the card guys from Atlanta Regionals where a guy was playing two Danko on the side, but he said he never really came up. So, I mean, if he was playing against Chamber, yeah, he would have sided that, but he never played against Chamber, so of course it never happened. Um, but really, no one is playing Danko in their main or side decks right now just because it's not really all that needed. And, uh, you know, if you're going to side two cards just for Paleozoic Frogs and you're kind of playing the wrong deck because if you're playing Zoo, then you don't really have to worry about that matchup. Uh, same goes for all of its other matchups, really. Like, the only matchup you really have to worry about in Zoo is the Zoo mirror match. Like, no matter what mirror match it is, whether it's pure zoo or just if they have a zoo engine, you have to worry about that aspect. And then you have to worry about your blue eyes matchup because that can go 50-50. It can just really depend on who opens up better. Um, but, you know, overall, I think that the event ran smoothly-ish besides the cheating. Um, my body as a shield is such a staple now. You've got to play two to three in your main deck. Um, you, I think it's a card that you can't really side because I feel like that card's just so good that it just puts you at a disadvantage if you're not already playing it starting off game one. You know, you try to Dark Hole or get your opponent's board or Dryden them, and, you know, they just have the My Body, and then, you know, you don't have the My Body to counter their My Body. Or if they go off turn one and, you know, you don't have a My Body ready for them already set on the board, then you're kind of just SOL. But just a little short video for you guys just to get y'all's opinions about the event, what y'all thought about it. Uh, obviously, 
Zoo is the best deck. If you're not playing Zoo, you better be playing Statue, Stone, or Chamber, and that's really your only other options because everything else just got so insanely power creeped. Uh, DDD had its two weeks of fame, and now that deck's gone. ABC, you got six months out of it. Sell the deck and build, you know, Zoo if you haven't sold it already. Um, but if you don't have the money for Zoo, then, you know, I say just play Chamber and a Rogue. And if you don't want to play that, then you might just want to take the format off until we get Link Summoning or Banlist, whichever comes first. But anyway, thank you guys for watching as always, and I will catch you guys in the next video.